Shout out to Neil. He wrote this comment on the last video. You guys can check it out. I like the real life example with all the different clients, different hair textures, styles. Thanks for that. Thank you for being a great subscriber. And today we're going to break down a different type of texture where his hair is actually pretty thick. A lot of times I like to be able to stretch out my blends, but in this particular case, I want to keep this a little more square around the parietal ridge. A lot of people are rounding the hell out of the top of the hair and it kind of creates this like cone head look and it makes styling the hair later much more difficult. So I actually like to a lot of times try to keep it more square, especially in that area. And I'm going to show you guys how to kind of box that out with your blend and make it all come together the right way. Oh, and by the way, if you're not a barber or an inspiring hair person, I would encourage you guys to just keep it moving. This is probably not the video for you um, because today we're going to be getting down into the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts, and we're going to be breaking down a blend from start to finish. So to start out with, we're actually going to take our taper blade. With this particular client, I've struggled with his haircuts, um, blending out that line. So I want to make sure that I put this line in as soft as possible. And that's why I grabbed a clipper with a taper blade. It's not super zero gapped. And actually I was using my instinct clipper to, to do that. And we're gonna put our first guideline in with this. This is gonna change a couple of steps a little bit different than how you've seen me do the majority of my haircuts out here. So let's go ahead, let's break this down on the board and let's show you guys what we are up to today. So let's go ahead, let's break down what's going on in this haircut. We're gonna use the board as always and we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of this thing. Let's start with our taper blade and we're gonna actually put our first guideline in. And we're gonna call that our closed taper. So when we put our guideline in with a closed taper blade and we're still planning on doing a skin fade, it's going to rearrange some of the steps that you're used to seeing on this channel. So with that being said, we're gonna actually have some follow-up steps underneath it and then we're gonna do what we gotta do to blend above it. When we decide to put in this guideline, as always, we wanna make sure that we're looking for any areas that are gonna make this more difficult. We wanna make sure that we're not putting it right on the occipital bone. We wanna put it above or below those areas if we can. So pick some good spots, let's drop it down in the back a little bit because we have definitely a little bit of a colic to work with and let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of breathing room around the front. So if you notice, a lot of times when I put my guideline in, like if this is, if this is the client's um, eyes, a lot of times you're gonna see, I sort of curve the guideline and then I'll drop it lower in the back. The back's gonna kind of look like this and then I'm gonna repeat that process again. That's gonna allow me to save a little bit of hair around the very front of the hairline so that later when I do the edge up, it'll actually be visible, it'll actually show. So now, because we did steps a little bit different, we're gonna take our trimmer underneath and we're gonna actually use it in the upward facing direction. This was my trimmer and the trimmer I'm using is actually my sideboard. One of my favorite for removing a lot of bulk. It's just super smooth. I'm gonna come up to that line in the upward direction and I'm gonna flick up and out. I'm not trying to run directly into that line, otherwise that would defeat the purpose entirely of using our closed taper blade to put that in. So the other thing you need to know about this particular trimmer is it's not zero gapped, it's not gonna cut super close, and it's very gentle on that client's skin. And when I do this process, I'm gonna work my way all the way around the head. I'm gonna be very careful when I come in contact with that closed taper line. And uh, if you're doing the beard, something like that, I, tr I try to kind of knock out like the very bottom of that outline of the beard. It's just like whatever I can do to speed up the process, I'm going to try to do at this point. So now we're actually going to start using our electric shaver underneath and we're going to get this whole area to skin. But the difference in this cut is when we get close to where we ended off with the trimmer, we're going to relieve pressure. We're going to flick up and out. And we're going to do that by tipping our electric shaver upside down so that we can use that blade kind of more like a single foil blade. You'll notice there's a little bit of an offset with that instinct shaver. And honestly, guys, this shaver is so fast. Like, if you don't believe me, um, check out this clip. This machine has changed the way I work. I work completely different now. I used to kind of tap like this to, to do all those spots, but there's no need to do that anymore. I can just move up in nice little panels all the way around the head. Me personally, I do a lot of skin fades, so having the right tools definitely makes this easier. Like literally, I can remove all the bulk off the side of a client's head in probably less than one minute, which is absolutely ridiculous. So once we have our electric shaver step completely done, we're happy, um, we're, we're gonna move on to our next step. 
I have the instant clipper and I have it in the open position. So if you look at this clipper right now, it's actually in the closed position. I'm going to open it all the way. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate the clipper out as I make my first couple of passes. My goal is to make a guideline about the width of one finger, maybe even two fingers, and I'm going to make sure that I have the clipper tipped out in the first couple of steps, and then as I go back through, gradually I'm going to begin lowering it and lowering it. Now, the nice thing about having used the taper blade to put this in is we should be able to remove this line, theoretically speaking, with a taper blade. Of course, that's not really what's going to happen, and that's why we're going to have to use other things, but theoretically speaking, if I put a line in with this clipper, I should be able to remove that line with that clipper. So as I continue working my way around the head and I move it flat, I want to caution you about one thing too, real quick. The, the taper blade, a lot of people think that the taper blade, the flat is actually here. Flat is not here. Flat is actually here because that's where the blade is curved. So that's what's going to be the point of contact there that's going to get it to cut as close as it possibly can. One mistake that I've seen an awful lot when I worked as a barber instructor was twofold. One, they would leave the head an awful lot, and two, they wouldn't make a really good contact with much pressure on the head when they were there in the, in the first place. So if you can make a nice pressure against the head, flick off, and actually use this length for all it's worth, you're going to find all your haircuts and all your steps are going to come together a little bit easier. So now the follow-up to our open taper step is going to be some clipper over comb. And this is the big distinction here because my goal is to create a very steep blend into the top. And he wants to wear the hair pretty long on top. So if you notice, I'm tipping the comb out on the angle that I actually want it to cut. And I'm cutting whatever sticks out. So it's really as simple as this. I know a lot of you guys make it more complicated, but I'm looking at the scalp, right? And I'm looking in the mirror and I'm deciding, okay, I want this to come off the head just like this, right? So I'm literally putting this up against the scalp. I'm tipping it out slightly and I'm cutting along the comb. You're going to be able to kind of shape that up towards the top and my eyes, a lot of times, are at the mirror and I'm making sure it's proportionate on both sides. What I'm trying to establish at this particular step is that my profile of my haircut comes up to the top the same way. So if I look at the client head on, if I'm looking at the top and this is his hair, I'm making sure that it's the same on both sides. In addition to that, I'm also blending any of the hair that's sticking out. Now, when you're dealing with somebody who's like kind of skinny or you're dealing with somebody who's got a lot of concave in their scalp, um, which he has some, and it's definitely going to complicate the back and it's definitely going to complicate some areas along the sides. You want to use clipper over comb here because that's going to allow you to kind of graze over that area, leave some areas longer, cut some areas shorter, and give you a better kind of overview of what you're actually doing. And that many times is actually going to give you a better cut than using a bunch of guards in these spots, which we're actually going to have to use anyways. So as you can see, the occipital bone area, um, even though I cut it the same length as all the rest of it, it looks like a complete bald spot right now. Don't worry, we'll fix it, let's keep moving. So now it's time that we're actually gonna start removing some of our guidelines. So the first guideline that I wanna attack is actually this closed taper guideline. So I'm actually gonna start with it fully closed, I'm going to poke into it with a couple of teeth, as you've seen me do many times, and I'm going to begin opening it little by little. Don't be surprised, and we're going to keep going, and we're going to keep going all the way until we have um, reached our open taper again, which is what we set our guideline in in the first place with. Don't be surprised for one second if this closed taper guideline doesn't come out. A lot of times, even though we did everything right, you're probably going to have to switch to a different clipper to make it come out properly. So we're gonna do the best we can with this taper blade because it's gonna prevent us from making many mistakes, but we're also gonna understand that we might wind up going back to a clipper that's zero gap. We might wind up going back to a trimmer. We might even go back to an electric shaver. Whatever it takes before we move forward, whatever it takes to make it blend from skin into the open taper. Okay, so I've done everything that I could do with the taper blade and it was time to switch over to a different clipper. So as you see now, I actually have our instinct clipper and the instinct clipper is zero gapped. And this is when you're gonna start to see a lot of this line come out. 
Now, I had this client, he was kind of like a peeker, man. Like, if you notice, he wanted to keep kind of looking over at himself, so he kept kind of turning his head a little bit, which made it a little more difficult for you guys to see in the camera. But this line, most of this line is now going to come out during this step, and if there's any residual, we will return to a trimmer, which we almost always do. Um, there's a lot of times where, we, where we'll have to do that because I have this zero gap, but it's not set, like, ridiculously close. It's not going to hurt nobody. So... This is in the fully closed position, and little by little, I'll begin bumping it up. Now, I know from experience that it's going to be better for me to use this diamond cut blade to do the next part of the blend. So I've put on the number one guard, and we are going to move with the number one two clicks open. So what I mean by that is when we go to do the next part, Right? We're going to close the clipper all the way, and we're going to bump it two clicks. One, two. And once we do that, that's going to start to set in a little bit of the guideline. Now we're free to go ahead and open it all the way or close it, and we're going to do both. So little by little, our goal is to have wiped out all of this area, and don't be surprised if we have a little residual in the half guard area because we did skip the half guard. So we can return to the half guard once we're done, and we will start to buff out the majority of that haircut. One thing that I have a problem with myself, and I've seen a lot of other people have this problem, is know when it's time to actually pull off of the haircut, right? Know when it's time to actually stop working with the clippers and pick up a different tool like the scissors or something like that. So at a certain point, you can make a haircut only so good, and then you're going to start to make it worse. We want to make sure that we pick that time when it's at its best to put that tool down. So this is something that takes practice. It takes time to know. And when I've worked out a whole bunch of steps with the clippers, the trimmers, everything like that, I know that it's definitely worth trying some shear over comb, some texturizing shears, and some different techniques to kind of tie this all together. Let's say that you guys are working at a spot and it's just not coming out the way you want it to and you're fighting and you're fighting. Um, one thing that I've definitely learned this year, and it was from E.T. the Barber, what he likes to do is he likes to kind of skip it and go back to it. And there's definitely, I, I got to say, that's definitely been very helpful. Like when I skipped it and came back to it, it's weird. It's like you come back to it, you got a fresh pair of eyes, and all of a sudden you work it out in like two seconds. I don't know why, but that's just, that's just the way it is. And it's true, it works. So as you can see, we're starting to build a good amount of weight towards the top what do you guys think about this type of haircut what do you guys think about this type of style i'm trying to build a good amount of weight here i'm not trying to go in there and and blend that all out completely wind up making them look like a cone head no i'm trying to build a nice square shape and i think when you see this haircut towards the end you're really going to like it so whenever we do a haircut like that there's going to be whenever we do a haircut like this there's going to be a fair amount of troubleshooting we're definitely going to have to go through a couple of different steps and there's a few things that are going to make it easier for you one is to have those two trimmers set up the right way one zero gap one soft set we've talked about this a million times two is to make sure that you have a couple of different blades on your clippers to try now if you're using like babeless like having the wedge blade having the mim blade having the fade blade this is going to be the same thing you are gonna use a combination of those things if you're using andis masters you're probably going to need a fade blade you're going to need uh, a, a taper blade if you're using like really any blade system any tool system that you're using you're going to need to have a couple of different blades you're going to need to have a couple of different options now that's going to do a couple things for you one that's going to help you work out that skin area from trimmer open taper on that's going to help you work that out it's also going to help you work out some of the upper lengths because you don't always have to change guards. You can actually keep the same guard and change the clipper and try something different inside of it. So you would be surprised what you can accomplish with all that troubleshooting, but it's very important that you have these things set up the right way. And then we get on to the back where that little bald spot was, where we're fighting with it. A lot of times you're going to have a client where the occipital bone like really protrudes and it's going to make the hair look shorter there than everywhere else. But have no fear. We're going to work it out. So I'm taking the Instinct. I actually have the Instinct Metal on this one. And I have it zero gap. And I'm actually going to start manipulating the skin. Sometimes I'm going to push the skin down into the clipper to get rid of that harsh line. Sometimes I'm going to let it loose. And then I'm going to continue to kind of manipulate the clipper in the way I hold it. I'm tipping it. I'm, I'm lifting it. 
and you're going to see me break out practically every trick in the book to try to get the back tied in. So yes, I'm switching back to my instinct that has the taper blade on it. I might go back to the fade blade. I'm going to go back to the trimmer a few times. I know I'm going to use some shear over comb. Now I'm going to give you some real ass advice, something you're probably not going to get nowhere else. Not every person that walks through your shop is going to be the perfect situation. In fact, almost every client that walks into your shop is going to have some kind of difficulty in their haircut. It could be a colic. It could be a, the way their curl pattern is. They might have two different types of hair. Like everybody is going to pose some kind of challenge. And that's why it's so important that we have a roadmap to follow that we can deviate from when we need to. Just like in this case, I'm definitely going to struggle a little bit more in the back. I knew that before I even got involved in it when I combed it out and I felt how bumpy the scalp was. And then I knew we were doing a skin fade. All of these things are going to cause me to make some adjustments to my process or possibly to struggle. So don't think for a second that just because you look at me and all that I've accomplished that I don't have clients that I struggle with. Everybody does. And if you say you don't, well, you're a liar. Now, another, another thing that I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that's going to make your life easier Sometimes I would see students, they'd be cutting hair, right? And the client's head would be like this, and they'd be sort of like moving out in a way like this. They're doing that because they're not pushing the client's head down, getting them to sit in the right, correct spot. Like adjust the client's head. Make them look all the way down. A lot of times they're going to do this to you. Every time you're cutting, a lot of times people just want to start looking up. Like... You have to understand that you're the barber, you're the professional, all this falls on you if it goes south, so make sure that you keep that client positioned the way you need to. Some people are going to move around a little bit, there's nothing you can do, but if that client can stay still, if you can have them tip their head this way, this way, and especially down, when I was dealing with that occipital bone, um, I definitely had to keep pushing the client's head down. Make sure that you do that, because all this falls on you in the end. So... Now we're going to run through, we're going to use a little bit of texturizing shears, we're going to use a little bit of shear over comb, and we're going to work our way around the head until we get this to blend in really nicely. So I do got to say, there's one thing that I really look forward to on any given day when I'm at the shop. It's when somebody who's not really been to like a real barber or a real good barber uh, walks in and I get a chance to just really blow their mind and show them what they could look like. And part of that sometimes is using enhancements and just really pushing it a little bit further than they're used to. And I love, I love, love, love doing that. And so I did that with this client, right? The very first time I cut his hair, I was like, hey, do you, you use enhancement? He didn't even know what I was talking about. I put it in there. He's like, yo, I really like that. And now he asks for it all the time. Now, I didn't ask him to give me $100, but the very first time I cut his hair, he gave me $100 and he gives me $100 like every week now. So Now, in this haircut, we've learned how to stack the weight on the sides, create a little bit more of a square shape towards the top. We learned how to work with a variety of different tools to create the blend and in the other haircut the one that I did previous to this which you guys could check out Jorge's hair this haircut is completely different because his hair was super fine he doesn't have a ton of it and his hair is super dark so we did make some adjustments to our process and we really covered well how to cut the top in that video so if you want to see that go ahead head over there I'll see you guys over there so shout out to you guys who are barbers shout out to you guys who are in school um, remember one thing I got to say, when you decided to go to school, you had all this energy, all this positivity. You were going to make a difference. You were going to go forward. You were going to figure this out. Now you get to school and this happens to a lot of students. You'll hit a slump. Usually it happens after like two months, sometimes three months. You start to see what it is. You start to question whether it's right for you. Like this is normal. Everybody goes through this. Get out of that slump by a couple of different ways. Go to a show. Go find somebody to mentor you. Push through because I promise you there's some light on that other side. This is a wonderful business. You're going to really enjoy being a part of it. And when you go to a show, it kind of shows you that you're a part of something bigger than yourself. So go find somebody, sign up for a class, and just kind of kind of break, break the rhythm, man. Break the rhythm. And then when you go back to class, when you go back to school, you're going to be sitting down there with that same energy. And what is life if it's not about energy? Bring that positive energy everywhere you go. Bring that to people. Bring that to places and see how far it gets you. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Mr. Eddie Barber. Over 800 videos to help you learn. These videos are obviously a lot of work, so do me a favor, man. Smash that thumbs up and drop me some love down below. That's the least you could do. With that being said, I'll catch you over there in that other video. Peace.